Dorms. From the good, to the bad, to the inhumane, dorm living is a rite of passage for Stanford students. Today, we're on a journey to find the most lit place to live on campus. I'll be tier listing dorms on the categories of niceness, location, food, community, vibes, and horniness. Just kidding about that part. Before we begin though, I want to give three disclaimers. One, I will not be able to rank every single dorm at Stanford because there are a trillion dorms and otherwise we'd be here for a patrillion years. So this is not an exhaustive list of all dorms at Stanford. Number two, these rankings are, they're just like my opinion, man. You know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. If I rank a dorm as B tier, but you think it's A tier, there's no reason to get mad and start writing a whole essay in the comments. Oh my god, are you seeing this? This guy says Robley is not a good dorm. That's, that's it. I'ma show him. I will mentally and spiritually destroy him. There's no need for that, man. We just have different preferences about where we want to live. There's no need for violence. And lastly, if I'm being honest, the best dorm at Stanford is probably a B-tier dorm. Basically, every dorm has tiny rooms with no privacy, terrible architecture, foam pads, not even mattresses that are like sleeping on a wooden board, laundry machines that will destroy your clothes, kitchenettes that show why we need law and order, lest someone steal your food, and worst of all, living in a Stanford dorm means you will be living amongst Stanford students. A fate I would not wish upon anyone. I think I'd rather live in a frickin' monkey enclosure than among Stanford students. However, for the sake of this video, I'll be grading the dorms on a curve so everything isn't just smushed into three tiers. But keep in mind, when I say a dorm is S tier, what I really mean is it's the best of the B tier dorms. All right, with all that out of the way, let's begin. I'm gonna start with the freshman dorms and then work our way to the upper class dorms. First up, we got Stern and Wilbur. And yes, I know these are two totally separate dorms, but I'm grouping them together because they have a lot of similarities. They're both known for providing the typical college freshman experience. So, if you've always dreamed about having wacky adventures and late night conversations with your roommates and lots of partying and horniness, then, you've come to the right place. Because these dorms are filled with naive, idealistic, and again, horny freshmen, and because these dorms are located on East Campus and therefore don't give their residents seasonal affective disorder like dorms on West Campus, these places are a petri dish for allowing 18 year olds to be exceptionally 18 years old. Stern and Wilbur also have great locations on campus, being close to a lot of buildings where classes take place and multiple dining halls. These dorms do have some differences. I feel like Stern is a little bit more physically connected while Wilbur is kind of more spread out and Stern is definitely more Instagram friendly. On the negative side though, these places can exacerbate feelings of being left out since cliques and typical social hierarchies easily form within the summer camp-like atmosphere. Overall, Stern and Wilbur provide that cliche freshman experience and are the most coveted dorms among freshmen. Based on the tight-knit communities, good location and food, and strong high school musical vibes, I'll place Stern and Wilbur in the S tier. Next up, we've got Crothers. And let me just say, if you're a freshman assigned to live here, I hope you enjoyed having hopes and dreams. The single word I would use to describe Crothers is jail. It looks like jail on the outside. It looks like jail on the inside. It even looks like jail in the cells. I mean rooms. It even has a jail yard. Crothers is basically this giant concrete eyesore in the middle of campus that was probably just built as a baseline shelter rather than a place for personal growth or development or getting enough vitamin D. And listen, even though I didn't live in Crothers, I did spend a lot of time in Crothers because all my friends lived there their junior year. So I know what I'm talking about. The rooms are mainly one room doubles with thin walls 
and zero privacy. Also, I don't know if this is like the angle at which Crothers is aligned with the sun or something, but it's always super dark in Crothers, even in the middle of the day. So it feels like you're living in a freaking dungeon. Refreshment rooms in other dorms are also shitty one room doubles though. So what really puts Crothers over the top in the crap department is the shitty ass vibes. It feels really cramped like you're living in a sardine can. The interior is like all a different shade of gray. There's always this weird smell and the common spaces are all super tiny. And also, all the bathrooms in Crothers are gender neutral. And FYI, before you come to cancel me, I am fully in support of gender neutral bathrooms and I think every building should have multiple gender neutral bathrooms and maybe this is just my societal programming that makes me feel this way, but let's just be real. It's awkward to walk into the bathroom to take a huge shit and there's your hall crush brushing her teeth. Interestingly, everything outside of Carver's is actually kind of good because it's right next to Stern and Wilbur, so it also has that good location. It's just everything inside Crothers that sucks. I'll be honest, I can't really find one redeeming quality about Crothers. Since it became a freshman dorm after I graduated, I can't really comment on the community of Crothers, but I can't imagine it's good since it feels like Crothers was built to prevent social interaction. So. I hate to do this, but I have to put Crothers in the frickin' F tier. Next up is Branner. First of all, I can't believe they gave the freshman Branner. Branner is actually one of the nicer dorms on campus, and it used to only be for upperclassmen. But I guess they gave him Branner to offset the shittiness of giving a freshman Crothers. Branner has big golden age of Hollywood vibes. It's old like Crothers, but while Crothers is old and shitty, Branner is old and classy. Look at these sweet ass high vaulted ceilings. The chandeliers. The piano. The comfy cushions. Alright, get the fuck out of here. The big ass windows. Just, mwah, chef's kiss. I can just imagine some Victorian ghosts sneaking down the hallway, but in a cool way, not a scary way. Brainer also has two room doubles, which is like the holy grail of rooms for freshmen. A whole ass door to give you extra privacy to study really hard. Brainer is also located right next to the other dorms I mentioned, so it also has a great location. It even has its own smaller dedicated dining hall that isn't as crazy or packed as Stern or Wilbur's. Overall, Branner is a really cool dorm, so I'll put it in the A tier. One warning though, I don't know what the community is like at Branner since it became a freshman dorm after I graduated. The vibes could be weird because Branner basically feels like the East Campus version of Robley. And as we'll learn later, Robley was hell on earth for me. Robley and Branner are both historic huge buildings, whereas Wilbur and Stern are broken up into smaller sub-dorms. So it might be hard to interact with fellow freshmen in the hugeness. If Branner has bad vibes, and again, that's totally just speculation on my part, it could drop to as low as the C tier, because vibes are very important for freshman year. Next is Castaño and Lontana. And they gave these dorms to the freshmen too. It wasn't always that way. Back in my day, it was for upperclassmen only. In fact, I lived in Castaño my junior year, so I know all about this place. These dorms are just a very average place to live. Nothing too awesome, nothing too terrible. Everything is just meh. The rooms, the bathrooms, the hallways, the common spaces, all just kind of add up to a blank canvas place to live. Which I think is good. At least you're not living in Crothers and can actually see the sun. These dorms also sometimes look Instagram worthy. There's this big window in the staircase in Lontana and Castaño that gives you a great view and it is cool to ride your bike back from classes into this secluded little oasis on campus. The location is both good and bad. 
you're still living on East Campus, so you're close to a lot of stuff, but you are on the very edge of East Campus. You do, though, get two room doubles, which is a big plus. By the way, even though Castaño and Lontana are two separate dorms that require separate keycard access to enter, there's literally a hallway connecting the two dorms, so you can have cross-dorm sleepovers and pollination if you choose to. When I lived here, I honestly had a pretty good time. I lived in a single, which was mega lit for me because I didn't have to deal with the annoying Stanford general population and I could just mold person up and be hella antisocial and weird. Which is great if you're a depressed junior like I was who didn't want to make eye contact with a single person in the dorm, but might be rough if you're one of the freshmen assigned to live in the singles because I think people have this fantasy of mega bonding with their roommate. Overall, I'll put Castaño and Montana in the B tier for just being okay places to live, but I could see these places going as high as the S tier if the vibes are good. I could see Castaño and Montana producing the same crackhead energy as Wilbur and Stern, since these dorms look way more like Wilbur and Stern than Branner looks like Wilbur and Stern. But again, that's just all pure speculation on my part. Up next, we got Ing and Kimball. These two dorms, along with Castaño and Lantana, complete this little place on campus called Casper Quad. And I actually lived in Kimball my sophomore year. There's nothing that remarkable about Ing and Kimball. They basically have the exact same pros and cons as Castaño and Lantana. The only difference really is that Ing is the newest building since it was built a few years ago and Kimball is the biggest of the four. But besides that, there really isn't that much of a difference between these dorms. Except for the fact that the vibes are slightly worse in Ing and Kimball because they're upper class dorms and so they don't have the excitement or community of a freshman dorm. Because of that, I'll just put these dorms in the B tier. All right, now we're gonna go all the way to Flomo. Flomo's best feature is probably its dining hall, which I think I put in the S tier in my dining halls tier list video. They serve good food, and I think the little rooms they have for eating are a good place to get freshmen to talk to each other. Flomo's main downside is that it's on West Campus. Quick digression about West Campus. West Campus has just terrible vibes. I don't know if it's because it's so spread out or because it's so far from classes or maybe there's just a permanent cold front hanging overhead. I don't know, but living on West Campus sucks. If you wanna have the typical fun college experience, live on East Campus. If you wanna contemplate your entire existence and why you went to this stupid ass school, live on West Campus. I can almost guarantee you that if you did a survey of Stanford students, mental health issues would be way higher on West Campus than East Campus. Basically, people who live on West Campus are depressed, and people who live on East Campus are depressed and go to parties. Anyway, like I was saying, Flomo's location isn't the worst, but it's still not that good because it's only close to one dining hall, Flomo, and it's a decent bike ride away from classes. The vibes are also not as poppin' as they are at Stern or Wilbur, and the gray-ass buildings of Flomo are a tier down from the good dorms on East Campus. Overall, I'll put Flomo in the B tier because it's not the worst place to live if you're a freshman, but also not that good. Next is West Log, which is like a worse version of Flomo in every way. The main problem with Westlog is that the vibes are all out of whack. In Flomo, there's at least a spark of hope that you might be able to have a fun freshman experience. In Westlog, all that hope is flushed straight down the toilet because Westlog is located smack in the middle of West Campus. The vibes are all off and the community here is more fractured than most other freshman dorms. Again. I don't know why it is that way, but 
It just is. Anecdotally, people who live in West Log just have a lonelier, less fun freshman year. Since most freshmen live on East Campus, you'll be disconnected from them and just gonna have to deal with the freshmen on West Campus. And as a former freshman resident of West Campus, let me tell you, I am not even exaggerating when I say that living on West Campus probably derailed my entire Stanford experience. It's actually hard to even imagine how terrible things would soon become. Besides that, West Log also has a bad dining hall, a bad location, and some of the rooms are even older than Flomo's. Some good things about West Log are that the courtyard is pretty, and you're close to the good gym on campus, and some of the rooms have sinks in them, but that's about it. All the important things that you look for in a dorm suck here, so I'm gonna have to put it in the C tier. Next is Governor's Corner. If you're assigned to live here as a freshman, I am so sorry to have to be the one to tell you this, but you're fucked. This place is even worse than West Log. Just pack it up, man. Transfer to a different school, because you ain't having that fun freshman experience. You're going to be battling with your demons every single night here. Governor's Corner, aka GovCo, is just so damn far away and isolated. You're literally a 20 minute bike ride from East Campus, so most freshmen are never even going to come by here. GovCo is even far away from Flomo and West Log, so if you want to make friends, you just have to pick among the tiny group of freshmen who are banished to live here. GovCo used to only be for upperclassmen who are better equipped to deal with the crippling loneliness of these dorms, but I guess they gave the freshmen GovCo to offset giving them Branner, Castaño, and Lontana. I mean, what else is there even to really say? The vibes are just fucking terrible here. There's one dining hall, you gotta bike like a hundred miles to class, and it's absolutely dead here. There's no parties or events ever happening here. F, -f, 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 -f tier. I can't believe they did the freshmen dirty like this by assigning some of them to live here. But if you're looking for a desolate place to study without distractions, GovCo is great for you. All right, that's all the freshman dorms. Now let's do the rest of them. Toyon. Toyon is the most preferred place for sophomores to live and with good reason. Toyon has old vibes and is beautiful with a humongous common space, some nice trees, and even a fountain outside. Very cool and very good vibes for sophomore year. There's still a sense of community, but it's a more mature version of the crackhead energy from freshman year, since it's time for y'all to get hashtag serious about your studies. It has a good location on East Campus, and most of the rooms are two-room doubles, which is big thumbs up. Overall, Toyon is a nice mix of friendliness and quietness for sophomores, which makes it probably the ideal place to live for them. In fact, I had some friends who lived in Toyon their sophomore year, and they seemed way less depressed than I was. I'll put Toyon in the A tier for being a very solid place to live. Next is Mirly's, which is the big boy dorm. It's apartment style living with probably the biggest rooms on campus with actual living rooms and a big boy kitchen. You even get your own bathroom, which is kind of a godsend so you don't have to see people shit on the floor on the weekends. When living in Mirly's, you don't have to be on the stupid ass expensive meal plan and can actually cook your own food. Considering though that the nearest grocery store is a pretty hefty walk or bike ride away from campus, it might be hard to find the time to cook meals while you're also being a student. But hey, at least you're not being highway robberied by R&D for these expensive ass meals. Besides that, Mirly's is a pretty huge building and has a reputation for being the dorm of choice for student athletes. Community seems to be non-existent since everyone is busy keeping to themselves and doing their own thing in this big ass building and the location is pretty poor. Even though it's on East Campus, it's all the way on the edge of East Campus. Overall, if you're into the whole 
independent living thing and are fine with living with a bunch of jocks, Mirly's can be a good option for you. For me, I'll just put it in the B tier. Next up is EVGR A and holy shit, here comes the big box. These buildings weren't even finished by the time I graduated. It was just a bunch of steel and dirt. And now it's the lap of luxury. You got the amazing views. You got the spacious rooms. You got your own kitchen. You got the amazing hardwood floors. But two knocks here. I'm guessing it's really hard to build community here in such a huge mungus building, especially when there are a bunch of grad students also living here and grad students are like the most antisocial people on earth. And EVGRA is really far from campus. Just for those two, I think I have to knock down EVGRA to the B tier, but the building itself, beautiful S tier. Next isn't really an official place on campus, but it's what I'm calling the far row. I'll be honest, I do not know much about these dorms because they are located in like the land where the sun does not reach. In fact, I think the first time I ever came here was after I graduated because I had a friend who was living here his senior year. The main thing you have to know about these dorms is that they are super far away and I'm not kidding you, you have to like bike up this giant ass hill to get here and it's right by the highway that passes by Stanford. Despite the shitty location, these places actually have pretty decent vibes. I don't know why the vibes are better here than they are on West Campus when they're both remote locations, but they just are. People hang out, there are chefs who cook the food. It's a chill time and a decent place to kick back. There are also some pretty cool outdoor spaces here and parties actually get held here, unlike on West Campus. Overall, I'll give this place a C plus tier, B minus. Um, the location is definitely bad and it's far from ideal, but the vibes go a long way in preventing this place from feeling like that other place. <sighs> Robley. Fuck this dorm. Fuck this dorm sideways. Fuck this dorm upside down. Fuck this dorm to hell. Again, because I am salty as fuck, I will repeat what I said earlier. I am not exaggerating when I say that living in Robley probably derailed my entire Stanford experience. Do not be fooled by the ivy walls. This is a place of misery. And they changed this dorm to be upper class only so freshmen like me no longer have to suffer through this place, but the ax forgets. The tree remembers. Let me just list the ways in which Robley sucks. It's old, but not in a cute way, in a that stain has been there since the Soviet Union kind of way. The rooms are quads, which means you get all the zero privacy of a one room double times two. The halls are super isolating. I was in hall 1C, which was like living in quarantine in 2017. Fuck 1C. Lakeside dining is terrible. The location is terrible. Cops are always giving out tickets at the stop sign by Robley. The dorm is isolated from any other dorm. And if that wasn't enough, there is literally an evil hex garden right outside. Robley sucks. I hate everything about Robley. I hate the pretentious ass ivy outside. I hate the ugly, smelly ass carpets. I hate the maze-like, confusing hallways. I hate the noise that's always coming from the shit that's going on in Robley Theater. Just, 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 uh, Robley, man, Robley. They should honestly just push this dorm into Lake Log and replace it with a giant compost heap it would benefit Stanford more than Robley currently does. Die tier. Go to hell, Robley. Next is Sweets. Sweets is located in the same place on campus as GovCo, so they share a lot of the same cons. But there are some differences. In Sweets, there are four to six people to a room. So if you're an antisocial fuck, don't live here. Sweets also probably has the best food on campus. 
since there are four private chefs who cook delicious foods for each building. It's very vibey to have a meal in sweets, and side note, I was a dishwasher for sweets my freshman year, so I got to see, and sometimes even have, some of the delicious foods. Shout out Dennis, the chef I washed dishes for, you was a G. Also, confession time, I was the guy who cooked dinner on Sundays because Dennis had the weekends off, so apologies for the people in sweets in 2017 for my weird ass pasta nights. Overall though, Sweets does still have a really bad location and I personally am not about that socializing life, but just for the food, I'll put it in the C plus tier. All right, next is the row. The row is where people who wanna feel popular live. It's dominated by juniors and seniors who are vibing out. You only live on the row if you wanna have a good time. So while each specific dorm is unique and has its own community, in general, people are pretty chill and looking for other people to hang out with. The buildings are pretty unremarkable. While they might look really cool on the outside, on the inside, they're at best just marginally better than the average Stanford dorm. What makes the row, the row, is the vibes. At night on the weekends, you'll often be able to hear the mating calls of freshmen from your window, and you're only a stone's throw away from all the lit parties on campus. Combine that with the best location on campus, smack in the middle of all the action, and good food cooked by private chefs, and you've got a cool place. But I'm gonna have to give Vero a ding because I feel like it was full of the people I strongly disliked the most at Stanford, fake preppy people who are just looking to graduate and then find a nice cushy job at the top of the capitalist ladder. Maybe I was just projecting my own insecurities and self-hatred onto these people and I'm just a jealous cow. Or maybe they're all butts. This is my channel, so I make the rules here. I'm sure a lot of people love these dorms since they're consistently the most sought after places to live, but bro life just ain't for me. I'm gonna have to put it in the C tier. Next is co-ops. These places are weird, man. They're basically the same as row houses, similar buildings, similar locations, similar food situations, but if row houses were run by vegan anti-war hippies, are they nudist? Do they do a lot of LSD? I don't know, but these reputations aren't totally divorced from the reality of co-ops. Weird vibes, man, but if you're looking for a place to have a communist manifesto book club, this is the place for you. C tier. And those are all the dorms. A few bonus points. Frats and sororities also exist. They have their own dorms, but they're for cool kids only. If you're rich and white, you can live amongst them. Otherwise, you gotta slum it with the poors. The neighborhood system is really stupid. Basically, after I graduated, Stanford implemented this neighborhood system where you get assigned to a letter and you only can live in dorms assigned to that letter for all of your four years at Stanford. Oh, how I wish Stanford had something like Harvard's undergrad residential system. But they don't. Fuck Stanford. They spent all this time coming up with a new system just to come up with this stupid ass neighborhood system. And they couldn't even give cute little names to the neighborhoods. They literally just named them after letters. Stanford is also kind of facing a housing crisis where there just literally aren't enough rooms on campus for everyone. Though building uh, EVGR might have helped with that. My sophomore year, they were converting singles into doubles, which shows you how bad it got. Here's an idea, Stanford. Build some freaking dorms on West Campus so that place isn't so desolate. One last note. I know I cracked a lot of jokes in this video and talked about how some dorms suck, but in reality, what dorm you live in doesn't have that big of an impact on your experience at Stanford. There are cool, friendly people everywhere, and at most, you're a 15-minute bike ride from 
anywhere on campus. Being assigned to a certain dorm isn't a death sentence for your social life. You can survive and even thrive anywhere as long as you go in with good intentions and an open heart. Except Robley, piece of trash dorm. I will never stop hating on Robley. Dismantle Robley, board by board, Roblo. That's the video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smack that like and subscribe button because these videos take a lot of work, bro. All right, stay safe, stay sane. Peace. Also, shout out Dripsy for reminding me like 10 times I gotta make this video. Appreciate you, bro.